Do you think it would be a failure if he didn't get a championship this year with the Lakers? <sighs> I think for him it won't be a failure because he does have a long time to go. But I do think the window of LeBron and AD as a pairing is smaller than I think people think. Mm. I think we've got about two years of like LeBron still at an MVP type of level, including this particular season. So if they don't win it this year in the wide open NBA that everyone's discussing, and it is, it's more wide open because we've got, you can make the case, I don't know, six, seven, maybe even eight teams have a shot, at least a puncher's chance at a championship. Because of that, I do think that they don't win this year. I think it's a failure. I, I, I absolutely do believe that, but I think it's more because of LeBron's timeline, less because of AD. That's a good point. I mean, Rob Palinka, he, the GM, he's already come out and said it would be a failure if they don't win, which sets the expectations pretty high. I think that realistic expectations for the Lakers are probably Western Conference Finals. If they get to the Western Conference Finals and they lose to a really good team, I don't think you can go home and be upset about it. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about is heading into this Lakers season. You're there. You're in Los Angeles. You hear about all the details. Like, what do you think the realistic expectations are for the Lakers? And what do you think about Frank Vogel, someone who doesn't get spoken about a lot? So I think the expectations, realistic expectations are the finals. Like, I, I don't think it should be just Western Conference Finals. And I'll tell you this, if they get bounced in the Western Conference Finals by, let's say, the Clippers, that's a complete disaster because that's the last team they want to get bounced by in this particular situation. Um, I think that if they're healthy, that... And again, that's a big key, right? Because LeBron, I know he's been a robot and a cyborg most of his career, Jacoby. But, you know, the biggest predictor, excuse me, the biggest predictor of future injury is past injury. And LeBron's coming off his worst injury of his career. And he's going to be 35 years old on December 30th. That stuff, you know, matters at this point. Anthony Davis has had a lot of nicks and bruises over the years. How many games does he miss? What, what's the timing of those injuries if he does miss games? But if they're healthy going into the playoffs, I just don't think there's anyone that can stop those two because they complement each other better than maybe any teammate LeBron has had. So I think it's championship or bust. I, I'm a firm believer in that, and I think that should be the expectation. As far as Vogel's concerned, though, I like the Vogel hiring. I think that they totally screwed up the Ty Lue thing. I, I'm, I'm totally in on that conversation, but they could have done way worse than Frank Vogel. I actually think Vogel is an excellent defensive coach. He's one of the top defensive coaches we've seen of this particular generation. Uh, that Pacers team was a top-rated defense multiple years uh, while he was under command there as the head coach. And I think that he's going to have a bit of a challenge trying to make this team a great defensive team, but I think he's good enough to make them a top 10 defensive team. My thing with Frank Vogel is, and he's talked about this in Sports Illustrated recently, I'd be worried about Jason Kidd and the saucer eyes mm -hmm. of Jason Kidd and the history of Jason Kidd trying to kind of usurp people to get what he wants. So one thing I think that you said that was really intelligent was the health of the Lakers. I mean, you can say this about any team. You know what I mean? Any team that has superstars, they need to be healthy for the team to be successful. But there's one name you didn't mention, which I think could swing the success of this team wildly if they're healthy, and that's Boogie Cousins. Mm -hmm. I mean, Boogie Cousins was coming off an Achilles injury last year. He had flashes with the Warriors. He had flashes in the finals, but he wasn't 100% right also with the quad injury as well. But if you get a healthy Boogie Cousins, you mix them in, mix him in with these other players. Like, I think that could make this team a, a, a championship favorite. What do you expect to see from Boogie this year? I, I don't think anyone really knows, but I'm with you on this, that everyone's very quick to anoint it a quote-unquote big three of LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Kuzma because they feel like he's the next guy coming uh, yep. as a young guy that they feel like he survived basically the auditions of last season. But let's face it, if you have championship aspirations, you're going to need DeMarcus Cousins to contribute in a big way. You need to find market inefficiencies. And they got him on the cheap. That's a market inefficiency as far as I'm concerned. Now, you know, look, Kuzma doesn't make a lot of money either. I get that. But he's still a young guy. He hasn't been through these type of playoff battles before. And DeMarcus Cousins going through what he went through last year just the chaos and the turmoil of his injuries on top of that still getting there with a team that got to the finals and dealing with all of that and the trials and tribulations there I think has made him a different type of player so you're right 
if he's right, then all of a sudden things change and they have a dynamic that no one else really can rival at this point, which is they can go big and even athletic, particularly with Anthony Davis, unlike any of the other squads that are championship favorites. And I think it's also, you mentioned sort of like the what Boogie went through last year. Don't forget, like he sat the bench. Like for one of his best games in the finals, he was sitting on the bench looking like he would never even make the rotation until he came in and then was, could contribute. I think that he could find himself in a similar role, being a small piece of what the Lakers want to do. And then all of a sudden, if Anthony Davis goes down or something, being a big piece of what the Lakers want to do. But we're talking about what the Lakers want to do in pieces. Like they've got a lot of new pieces. We mentioned Boogie Cousins, Quinn Cook, Danny Green, Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd. Like with all these new personalities, how much of an adjustment period do you expect starting the season? Oh, I think, look, man, the first easily 25 games are going to be an adjustment period. I think that you have to kind of get used to each other. It's not like the Clippers, for example, who have, uh, granted, they have Kawhi and Paul George, and we'll see if Paul George yes. starts the season, but the rest of that cast is used to playing together. With the Lakers, there's, there's not any familiarity, right? Like maybe Rondo, I guess, with with AD and, and DeMarcus because he's played with them previously and obviously he's played with LeBron some, Kuzma's played with LeBron, but as a collective, there's not enough guys who have played together. So there's gonna be some of that time. And I do think that they're gonna have to adjust to the way Frank Vogel wants them to play defense. You gotta play defense on a, on a string. He's gonna get need to get real buy-in from LeBron, particularly who, let's face it, has kind of paced himself on that side of the court over the last several years, dating back to about 2014. So I do think that at the first 25 games if they can come out of that let's just say you know 15 and 10 you know like 17 and 8 that that's a good start to the season because yes. i think they can potentially take off from there thanks for watching espn on youtube for highlights and analysis check out the espn app and for live streaming and premium content check out espn plus